you haven't already, please turn with me to 2 Samuel 22, 2 Samuel chapter 22. We have just a few more messages in our series on the life of David, and tonight's message is entitled David's Song of Songs. If you were to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 18, almost verbatim would be uh, the same passage from Psalm 18, uh, just a few words uh, have been changed, but throughout the, this study on the life of David, uh, we've journeyed with him when he was a shepherd, and then he became a soldier, uh, then as a sovereign or as a king and as a singer as well, and then also just recently we've seen him as a sinner as well. In, in the Bible, David has been described as the son of Jesse. He's been described as David the king. He's also been described as a man after God's own heart and the sweet psalmist of Israel. Uh, in, this, in this passage that we're looking at tonight, really, when it comes to David's reign as king, it's, it's entering the end of his life. If we were to look at 2 Samuel chapter 21, we'd see that there was a battle with the Philistines. And unlike the, the battle which David neglected to go to the battlefield, and, and then he fell into the sin of adultery with Bathsheba and tried to cover it up with Uriah and then murder and lying and all those things, um, this occasion David went out to war. But David actually almost died in this battle and uh, one of his mighty men came to his rescue and then the soldier said, you know David, um, it, it's best if you don't, you're, you're just a little bit too old uh, to go out to war and you know it's helpful for us when we get older to understand and know our limitations. And we, we can't always do the things that we always used to do. And yet, his, his uh, mighty men gave him some counsel, and he certainly uh, did uh, receive that and, and followed it. And so, 2 Samuel, chapter number 22, is this, uh, this song of songs of David. And so, we're going to look, and, and if you have uh, the outline from the bulletin this morning, if you're here for our morning service, uh, there was the outline for this message, if you have your bulletin with you as well. And so if you're following along in your outline, or you're just taking notes for the sake of taking notes, Roman number one in our outline tonight, David sings of God who saves. David sings of the God who saves, and this is verses 2 through 20. Beginning in verse 1, David says, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song, and the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. And David is recognizing that the Lord was the one who delivered him. The Lord was the one who saved him. Notice something that is very interesting in these first two verses. And he said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my savior thou savest me from violence did you notice something that stood out hopefully even while i was reading it didn't get to the point where it got aggravating but uh, notice all of the the personal um the personal descriptions that david has towards god he's not saying uh, the god of israel he's not saying uh, the god of abraham or the god of isaac or the god of jacob uh, he's not saying his dad's God or his parents' God. He's saying, my God. Uh, underneath David sings of the God who saves, we have capital A. He sings of a personal relationship. In those two verses, verses 2 and 3, ten times David uses the personal pronouns, my and me. What is he talking about? He's talking about a personal relationship that he has with God. And what a difference life, what a difference it makes when we go through life when we have a personal relationship with Jehovah, with God Almighty. Uh, just these last uh, few weeks, in many of our lives there's been a lot of changes, a lot of adjustments. And, and if God is just someone else's God, if it's the God of Open Door Baptist Church, or if it's the God of my spouse, or it's the God of my parents, or it's the God of my child, um, it, it doesn't really help us. But to have that personal relationship, and David certainly is acknowledging 
his personal relationship with God and what a difference that makes. You kind of get the idea of a little child that is saying, my, uh, that, that seems to be one of the first words that they learn in the vocabulary, my, mine, mine. And so it is, I hope, uh, that you could sing praises to God of his salvation because you know him personally. You have that foundation of a relationship with him. In Psalm 18, 1, and verse 1, David says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. That word love has the idea of loving deeply, having mercy. It's like a mother's love for her newborn, for her baby. It's that, that idea of the closeness, of the huggling, hugging, of the cuddling of that newborn. It speaks of the closeness of that heart of pure love. In, in essence, what David is saying about his God is I, I, I love him and I'm thankful for him and I want him to be close to me. Do you have that type of a, a relationship with God? Can you, as we sang tonight or as Cindy even pro played uh, the special Redeemed, uh, can, can you offer a song of praise to God because he is the God of your salvation? You personally know him. We looked at that this morning in our message in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, about how God divinely intervened because of his mercy, because of his love. He reached down and he saved us. How we're identified with Christ and the intent of God is that we would show forth the praises of him in the ages to come. David sings of a personal relationship, capital B, he sings of a powerful relationship. We think about the little kid's song, My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Is that the God that you know personally? Is he the God that you could sing praise to him for the power of his relationship? Notice the descriptions of David in verses 2 and 3. He calls him his rock, speaking of stability. He calls him his shield and his fortress, speaking of safety. He calls him the horn of his salvation, speaking of security. He calls him his high tower, thinking about his supply, his refuge, his sanctuary, his savior. No matter what the need that David has in his time of trouble, the Lord is that. And when trouble came in David's life, he knew and he could look back and he could testify that the Lord was there. The Lord heard his cry. The Lord delivered him. Uh, look at verses 5 through 7. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear me out of his temple. And my cry did enter into his ears. What a blessing it is to know that not only do we have a personal God that we've entered into a personal relationship with him, but he's powerful. And he's waiting for you and I to cry to him. To cast our, our eyes of trust and faith and dependence upon him to deliver us from our trouble. David he sings of the God who saves, and, and he's singing about this personal relationship that he has. He's speaking about, singing about this powerful relationship. In verses 8 through 20, he sings of the profound relationship. The profound relationship. Uh, he, he begins to speak about how God in his power moved to defend him and to sustain him in his time of trouble. Why did God, and, and if you were to take the time and, and maybe later this week as part of your uh, meditation devotions, you can read through uh, 2 Samuel 22 or you can read through Psalm 18 and see this. But why is it that God moved on behalf of David? Why is it that God would move on behalf of you or I and, and to show himself personal in your life and my life and powerful? Look at verse 20 of 2 Samuel 22. Verse 20 says, He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me. Why? Because he delighted in me. What a blessing it is to know that we have a God who delights in us. Who desires 
to do what is good in your life and my life. Who desires to be, as it says in Psalm 84, verse 11, for the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. We think about Psalm 23, and, and the Lord is my shepherd, and, and how He wants only good things for your life and my life. He knows what is best for us. And, and to know that the Lord delighted in David, that the Lord took pleasure in David, and so it is that the Lord takes pleasure in you and I that know Him personally. Do we have that profound relationship with God to where we could testify of His delighting, of His taking pleasure in you and I, of His protection, of His provision in your life and my life, to think that the God of the universe would even stop to consider us, would stop to not only consider us, but that He would take delight in us. That he would take pleasure. Do you think that the Lord is pleased that, that we've assembled here together tonight in the uniqueness of this format? Yes. I believe that this brings pleasure to the Lord God Almighty. That he is pleased. S such as it is when we choose to walk in the Spirit that that brings pleasure to him. Uh, when we choose to, to talk with him. When we choose to read his scriptures and to think about them. When we choose to share the glorious gospel with others, I believe that that speaks to this wonderful, profound relationship that we have. First of all, tonight, we see that David sings of the God who saves. But Roman number two in your outline, David sings of the God who sustains. Who sustains. Not only does he, did he know the God um, in a saving relationship, but he also knew that God had sustained him. That God had delivered his soul from death. That God had delivered his soul from harm and danger on many occasions. A, a few of these capital A in your notes through times of temptation. Through times of temptation, the Lord had been faithful to David. Uh, we, we see that he enabled him to be true. Now, yes, David did fall on several occasions. But for the most part, the Lord sustained him through those times of, of temptation when David was doing right, when David was in the right place, when he was honoring God and being obedient to him. David also sang praises of the God who sustained him, not only in times of temptation, but also in times of testing. Look at verse number 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord. The Lord will lighten my darkness. In those times of testing, in those times when David knew that he was the Lord's anointed. He knew that King Saul had been rejected. He knew that God was going to raise him up as the next king. But time and time again, Saul tried to take his life, and Saul was pursuing after him. And in those times of darkness, the Lord sustained him. At times, the Lord sustained him through a good friend by the name of Jonathan that encouraged his soul. And could it be that the Lord wants to sustain a brother or sister in Christ from Open Door Baptist Church? He wants to sustain them through the kindness and the thoughtfulness and the generosity of other believers that, that are looking for ways to meet needs, that are looking for ways to encourage. And so David could testify that in my times of darkness, the Lord was my light. He wrote later in Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So through times of testing, the Lord sustained him. Through times of temptation, the Lord sustained him. Capital C, through times of trials, the Lord sustained him. Look at verse 30. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. Uh, the, these were humanly impossible things for David to do, and yet God sustained him and gave him strength in times of trial. As a shepherd, it was a lion and a bear. As a, as a shepherd preparing to be a soldier, it was the giant Goliath. And throughout his life, through every test and through every trial, God sustained him. Through every obstacle, he saw that he could be victorious. And you and I, 
We have that same relationship with Jehovah, with a Heavenly Father who loves us. And we can sing a song of praise to Him for His salvation, but also for His sustaining grace. In times of temptation, He enables us. He prompts us. He says, you know, I don't think you need to go in that direction. He, he, the prompting of the Holy Spirit starts to throw up warnings and red flags and saying, no, this isn't good. This isn't a good path. This isn't a good decision. Why? Because He wants to sustain us. He wants, us, he wants to deliver us from that time of te temptation. In times of testing and trials, He sustains us with His presence. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Think about, um, think about the, the difficulty it is going to a doctor's office, right? The normal difficulty and waiting and going through procedures. Um, I, I'm thankful for the grace that God has given Kenny and Linda Webb uh, to know that, that Linda's had to go even through this time of social distancing and, and, and hospital downsizing and shutdown and all that, all that, I'll just say stuff, all that stuff to know that Kenny can't even be with his wife in the hospital for a test or, or that he can't be with there when the doctor's talking. But yet, God is there. His presence and His peace, whether in the doctor's office or in the parking lot, waiting for news of the procedure, waiting for news from the doctor. And so it is you and I can have the sustaining presence and peace and promises of God for your life and my life. David sings a song of the, David sings of the God who saves, of the God who sustains. Number three, David sings of the God who strengthens. David sings of the God who strengthens. You think about the life of David and the constant conflict, the constant difficulties and battles and the wars that he faced, and yet God sustained him and God strengthened him through it. And so David is singing here about the God who strengthens him. Look at verse 31. David says about the God who protected him, capital A, God has protected him. Verse 31, for by thee I have run through, verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried, he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord, and who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power, he maketh my way per perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and saith me upon my places. If you've ever been hunting, you understand the feet like hinds feet. You understand seeing that buck, and you're like, wow, I'm going to get a shot on that buck. And you pull that rifle up, and you're looking through that scope, and you're sighting in, and all of a sudden, at least for me it's happened, I make a noise. And that distracts, and all of a sudden, that buck that was once right there, or that, um, that herd of deer or elk that was once there, they take off. And it really is an amazing sight to see them traverse the landscape and, and the mountain and the hill and just how graceful they are. And David is saying that he made my feet like the hind's feet. He's the one who has protected me and delivered me. He's my rock, my refuge. Not only had God protected him, but capital B, God had prepared him. God was the one who enabled him to be a successful warrior. God was the one who enabled his hand. Look at verses 35 through 37. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not sleep. How important is it for your feet to be upright and secure in battle? You think that that would to have a solid foundation would be one of the most important things in battle. And he's acknowledging that the Lord is the one who prepared him. He also acknowledges that God is the one who promoted him from a shepherd all the way to king over Israel. From, from uh, just um, small insignificance to being victorious over giants like Goliath. And the same God who strengthened David is the same God who desires to strengthen you and I today. He is our protector. 
He is our preparer. Just as he prepared David's hands for battle, just as he prepared David's steps and his pathway, so he desires to prepare ours as well. And so we can sing praises of God. Why? Because he is our salvation. Because he's our sustainer. Because he strengthens. And then Roman numeral four, because David sings of the God who secures. The God who secures. The last two verses in 2 Samuel 22, the Bible says this in verse 50 and 51, Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is a tower of salvation for his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed unto David, and to his seed forevermore. This security, capital A, is a past arrangement. The word therefore has the idea of he's thinking backwards in his life. And as he thinks backwards in his life, he could see the security that God had provided him over and over and over and over again. You know, when we find ourselves in, in difficulty and trials and testings, it's always good to look back at testimonies of God's faithfulness, uh, trophies of God's grace, of His strength, of what He's done for us in the past. And so security for David was a past arrangement. And for you and I, we can look back at past struggles and difficulties and we could see how God worked. We could see how God was our security and he proved himself faithful in those times. We can remember that just as David said in verse 20, why has the Lord done all this in my life? It's because he has delighted in me. He's taken pleasure in me, and we can see the security in the past. Capital B, security is also a present asset. He says he's a tower of my salvation. Not just in the past, but today. And yes, we may not be able to see the whole picture. Uh, we started to do something that uh, just a few days ago, Kylie and Rob and I, we started putting a a puzzle together. It says over 500 pieces. I don't know how many pieces are in it. I'm, I'm assuming um, closer to 500 than 600. And it's of desert, desert wildlife and landscape. And, and so we have a picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like. And we took all of those pieces out and we started to, first of all, turning the pieces upright and then trying to get all the flat pieces did you know that, that the new puzzles today, the, the flat pieces that make the edge, they're not always flat and they don't always stick together. Some of them just kind of um, rest against each other. Uh, we're, we're still missing one piece on the, the border. Uh, but I'm looking at the picture and I'm saying, okay, uh, this is a Gila monster right here. And, and this is a scorpion right here. And yes, this is a rattlesnake. I haven't finished the rattlesnake yet. And, and this is a coyote. And, and this is, you know, a jackrabbit. And you're, you, you see the big picture. And then you look at all the individual pieces. You're just like uh, trying to get those pieces all to fit together. And here's the thing. God sees the whole picture. He sees it all. And so in your life right now, you may just be seeing one small little piece of the puzzle. And trust in a God who loves you and who cares for you. And that you can, that you can run to Him, present tense. He is your security. He is your high tower. So security is a past arrangement. Looking in the past, David could testify, and so you and I can as well. In the present, security is a present asset. It's something that we have while we wait a doctor's appointment, while we wait the news of, of um, the, the, the investments that we have invested in, while we wait for the news of a family member's situation, while we wait for those things, we can be secure. We can have the peace of God. And then lastly tonight, capital C, security is a permanent assurance. It's a permanent assurance. In other words, we don't have to wonder about the future. David says in verse 51, He is a tower of salvation for his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed unto David, and to his seed forevermore. You see, he was trusting the Lord, he was trusting security, not only for himself, but for his family, 
for his descendants. And as we remember, uh, there was a very important descendant that came from, the, the, from David, from the tribe of Judah, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we close Second uh, Samuel chapter 22 tonight, uh, we certainly see that David had so many reasons to sing praises to the Lord. And so it is that you and I can sing to our God tonight. And that's kind of why we had the, the little inspiration tonight of favorites. Uh, to open our mouths of praise and adoration to God. Why? Because He is our salvation. I hope you know it personally. You know Him personally. And as we reflect of all that He's done. He is the one who sustains us. He's the one who strengthens us. And He is the one who secures us us. As we close our service tonight, let's take a moment just to praise God and thank Him for who He is. Let's pray. God, I thank You for our time together tonight. I thank You for the beauty of the evening. I thank You for the beauty of the songs that we sang as we sang praises to You. And God, I, I thank You for the beauty of David's life as, he, as his life winds down. And as, Father, he, he thinks about you, he cannot but help to offer praise and adoration to you. God, I pray that each one of us would know God personally. That, Father, we would um, know him as our rock, as our high tower, as our buckler, as our shield as our shepherd. Father, may we know him as David knew him. May we know him personally and powerfully in our lives. And Father, may we sing praises to the one who strengthens us and sustains us and secures us. So God, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for the precious word of God that we can read and learn more about you. We thank you for the spirit of God that comforts us, that guides us, that illuminates us, that convicts us, that brings us back to you. And God, we look forward to the, to the day when, when we will see you and we will be like you. And, and we can offer praises to you for all of eternity. Until that day, would you help us to be thankful and offer to you praises. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. As we prepare to dismiss, dismiss tonight, I want to thank you again for joining us for our service. Um, uh, several of our guys will be heading out with the buckets, so if you had an offering you wanted to give for our church family, uh, you could do that as you leave. And then just a reminder, on Wednesday night at 6 p.m., we'll have our uh, midweek service as well. And we just started uh, this past Sunday night um, to, to look at adversity in our lives, seasons of adversity and um, looking at it really of what, God, what are you trying to accomplish in our lives? And so I hope that you, if you're able to, that you make it on Wednesday night. We'll have just a couple of hymns, and then we'll get right into the Bible study. And uh, thank you so much for being here tonight.